Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Martin and I'm currently an honours student in the chemistry department um, at the Photon Factory under the supervision of Dr. Kater Simpson. And today I'd like to talk to you about a really cool project that we've had in the lab over the last year called Poetry Off the Page. So, let's begin with some humble beginnings in the Photon Factory. So what is the Photon Factory? Well, the Photon Factory is a multi-user laser facility which specialises in producing exotic laser pulses. And so we've got what's called a femtosecond laser. And what this means is that the pulses that come out are, are only a femtosecond long. And so what is a femtosecond? Well, it's 10 to the minus 15 seconds. So that's 0 0.1401 second. So that's really, really short. So I'll just give you an idea of that. So one femtosecond is to a second as a minute is to the age of the Earth. So that kind of gives you an idea that a lot can happen in a femtosecond. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we can use this, these femtosecond pulses for two main things. Firstly, we can take slow motion pictures of molecules. And so for example, the molecule in the back of your eye, retinol, um, that's a carotenoid um, from carrots, so your mum was right when she said you to eat carrots. It doesn't improve your eyesight. When that gets hit by light, it breaks a double bond and you get this flipping that happens within hundreds of femtoseconds. And that is what, that is then triggered into your brain and that's how you register seeing light. So we can take slow-mo pictures of molecules. The second thing is we can machine anything. So usually when you machine something, um, you create a lot of heat, and that heat can, um, can melt, it can crack objects, um, but our femtosecond laser hits the sample, there's no time for heat to go into the material, and so you vaporise it, and it just kind of evaporates. <laughs> and so I'm just going to show you a video um, from the director herself, Dr. Kate Simpson, explaining what we do in the lab. And one of the things that we do in our lab in the photon factory is we use that idea of a leaf as a model to make our own energy converting machine. Eventually, we'll be able to make a material that you can embed in a roofing tile and just lay on your house. And then your house will absorb sunlight, convert it to electricity, which for us is the useful form of energy we would like to have, and you'll be able to run your television. So we use laser pulses, exotic laser pulses, as a tool. And we can study everything from um, art restoration, trying to figure out how pigments degrade and prevent that degradation in Renaissance paintings, to understanding the fundamental nature of how electrons and nuclei interact with one another on a molecular scale, to developing better drugs, um, things like cancer therapeutic agents that use light in order to kill off cancer cells. We also use that light to do engineering type things on tiny scales. So scales that are, um, length scales that are smaller than the width of a human hair. So we can use our lasers to drill features into materials or make little architectures of things, little molecular scale machines, um, and start probing things on the nano scale. So the reason the Photon Factory was established here at the University of Auckland was to enable the creative research of a wide range of basic and applied research to improve human health, to improve our ability to harvest clean renewable energy, improve the technology that we all use every day, and to understand the basic fundamental underpinnings of how nature works. So you said much better than I could ever say it. So, so then how does poetry come into this? Well, Kate has got a, a knack of, of, of saying that we can machine anything. And so she was talking with, um, with Michelle Leggett and Helen Sword, and they run a, a, a class in the English department called Poetry Off the Page, and they're trying to get poetry into new mediums which people aren't used to, so that people can engage with, them, with, with the poetry in ways they've never had before. And so when they heard that we could machine anything, um, they came knocking at the door to see if they could test our clay. <laughs> and so, we fired the laser. Um, we had um, 10 groups that came through our lab from the Poetry Off the Page class, 2012, and, um, and they chose uh, 
they chose an object from a stanza of Ian Whitty's Shadow Stands Up poem uh, that related to that stanza, and then they micro-machined that. So I've just got a video um, when they came in last September uh, and showed them what they were up to. started machining the projects, the, the, the poems, but it took us a lot longer than that. It took us about six months in the downtime um, in the lab to machine the rest of these, because each object had to be set up with the precise um, laser-tuned uh, laser parameters, so it took us quite some time. But I'd like to share a few stories about um, kind of the, the mishaps and some of the funny stories that arose from, from machining these poems. The first thing is, um, this banana box, which we tried to machine, so that's the banana box there. And uh, this isn't the original banana box we got. Actually, we got a different banana box, um, and we laser machined it, so that was great. However, we left it in the lab, and as you can see, it makes it looks like a very nice cutting board. And so someone came along and got their piece of plastic and and uh, basically cut it to pieces. Uh, so my fiance and I had to go down to the supermarket and explain to them that we wanted another banana box in order to laser machine poetry. <laughs> we got some pretty blank looks until we said that it was an art project and then they all kind of seemed to understand. <laughs> the other thing um, is, uh, is, is this dice, this dodecahedron, and um, it, uh, it should have the poem on the three face and it does. However, it also has poem four on the four face. Um, so that was my bad. <laughs> uh, that had to be corrected. Um, but we did show that we could machine every object. So we can machine everything uh, up to date. <laughs> so I'd like to show some, some really cool, some of my favourite objects that we machined. So this key here has the smallest poem on it. And so it's just in there, and you can't even see it with your eye. Um, and it is about uh, 600 microns across about six hairs. That's how big the entire poem is. So that is um, by far our smallest poem. Um, the other thing is that we were able to machine glass. So this here is a little stand of something, I'm not sure what. But we were able to machine in that without cracking it or doing any thermal damage. And this is actually what we've received a large grant to do in order to machine dielectrics for the semiconductor industry in order to basically design sensors and, um, and chemical sensor technology. And so um, it, was, it was great to be able to show that we could um, machine that when normal lasers would definitely fall short. And the last thing is the power shell. So this beautiful um, power shell here, we actually didn't get a whole shell to begin with. We got a tiny little piece and we couldn't machine it. So, um, so I, I went and we found another power shell and I hand sanded this. It took me a whole afternoon, so different grits and finally a diamond polish. And uh, interestingly, this here is a nanosecond laser machining and you can see all the thermal damage and the melting that occurs. And then here, compare that with the, with the sharp um, lines that we get from the femtosecond laser. So you can really see the difference between uh, using a nanosecond, a longer pulse, and a very, very short pulse. We literally can uh, machine that away with no, um, no heating at all. And there's a super secret. So as I was doing this, I was also preparing a secret. So I'll let you discover what that is. Measured in nanometers. How small is that? Well, your fingernails grow one nanometer every second. 
And in this tiny kingdom, it's hard to see where science stops and art begins. Jack Martin, who we met before, was the man that the Auckland University English Department called when they wanted poetry inscribed on everyday objects. This stanza reduced from this to the width of five hairs on the face of a watch. What this says to me is it's a message to say to us all that there's a lot of beauty in the world that we completely miss. Yes, um, I, I guess uh, I remember taking a picture of a power shell, just seeing the beautiful ridges in the power shell, which actually splits the light up. And, and being able to, to look at it on such a small scale, it, it, it's just a whole new dimension of, of reality, which uh, it, it is really quite, quite stunning. It takes the poetry to places where poetry doesn't usually go, and that's just exciting because poetry is almost everywhere around us, but to take it into this different kind of space makes us think differently about the meaning of it. During his hours of writing microscopic poetry with the university's million dollar laser, that he also wrote a message on a ring in letters the width of a grain of sand. While it sealed the deal, it's not the whole reason she said yes. It's not a whole package, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things, because um, you'd be surprised, though. He's got wonderful attention to detail, but the memory is just not there. <laughs> it's like love. You can't see it, but it's there. to check us out. Uh, firstly there's the website, poetryoffthepage.org.nz. Um, you can have a look and we've got a zooming interface so you can have a look at each poem and read um, all of the different um, stanzas. We've also got a library display where we've actually got a USB microscope so you can actually hold it over the object and see the different poems. Um, and email us if you have a challenge. So if you think of an object that can be machined, that currently can't be, um, some object, then, then go wild. So I'd, I'd like to thank all the people that helped out. Um, Fraser McMillan was, was really great at helping out with the machining side of things. Dr. Kaper Simpson for obviously allowing us to, to do this. Helen Sword and Michelle Leggett for uh, inviting us to, to, to be involved with their Poetry Off the Page class. Uh, Ian Weedy for, for providing the, the, the poem and allowing it to be um, circulated. Uh, Brian Donlin for the photo and, um, and also uh, and um, all the students from Poetry Off the Page 2012. And thank you very much for listening. <laughs>